the different Outlook task list options. You've got, you know, not started, in progress, completed, deferred, waiting on someone else. You can set a percentage completed, which is good if uh, you are tracking goals or uh, giving out tasks to your employees. You can see where they're at with these things. And you can, you know, assign these tasks to different people. And this is actually looking at your users. Now, since this is our demo system, I've only got uh, one user in there. That's our faithful employee, Bob. Oh, sorry, I actually have to add Bob to SharePoint first. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then you can put details on what you want your task, or in this case, what we want our goal to be. So obviously it's pretty uh, straightforward. We're just going to copy this down into our description. And this sounds like it's an annual thing, so you could type in your own date, or you can choose from picking a calendar. And we'll say this one's done. So there's our goal. You can see the statuses, the uh, completeness, who it's assigned to, and so on. I'm going to go back to my home site, though, because if you noticed, I accessed that task list in the shared documents from the uh, left-hand um, quick launch bar of our website but it's not on our main website. Again, everything on here is called a web part. When you create new items, you're putting the item out there in your intranet, but then you have to actually choose to have it displayed in where you want it displayed. So by default, our task list was already displayed on our left-hand bar, but let's say I want that over here too, on our home page. So I would click on, you notice I clicked on add web part, and I'm gonna add it to our right-hand column and I'm gonna find our task list. Simply check that box, say add. And now you'll notice that our task list is displayed on our front page on that right hand column. Now I'm gonna move it down to the bottom. I think it'll look better down here under our company links. And I'll exit edit mode. So there's our task list now. That's how you display items to different parts of the page. Now, obviously, you're going to want a lot more content than that just comes with this uh, little default layout here. To create your own stuff, again, I showed you uh, all what can be created uh, at the beginning of our webinar. But say we're going to want to make a, you know, a new document library. And we're going to call this um, Company Procedures. You can choose whether you want this displayed on the quick launch. I'm going to say no for this one. And before I was mentioned versioning. And when you're creating your new document library, this is when you decide if you want to do versioning or not. Default is no, um, but I'm going to change this to yes, being that this is one of the, the most powerful and useful features in a document library. You can also tell it what documents that you want to be the default documents for this library. And what that does is if you're in this looking at it and you click new, it's automatically going to launch Word if it's installed in your computer and open you in a new Word doc. When you save that Word doc, it'll save right to SharePoint. So we're going to create our new document library called Company Procedures. And we're going to go back to our home page. Now again, this Company Procedures link isn't really anywhere now. Because I didn't choose to add it to the quick launch bar and nothing goes on the front page by itself. So I'm going to put it out on the front page. I think it's a very important thing to have out there. So again, under Site Actions, in Edit Page, it's going to open up the window with um, what column we want it on. We're going to put this on our right-hand column. And you'll notice now, before, you didn't see this company procedures, but now we've got it. So I'm going to check that box and click Add. And we've got our company procedures here. Now I'm going to move this down a little bit. I'm kind of uh, picky about the way my things are laid out, and I always like to keep that uh, company logo on the top. Okay, so I like the way that looks. I'm going to uh, edit this. So now there's a company procedure library. And I'm going to upload a simple document here. Let's find a small one that doesn't take a long time to upload. Okay, so you know now if you think about what we did, say 
we just uh, added our company procedure manual to our document library. And let's go in there and edit that. I'll show you how the versioning works. Let's go into our company procedures. And I'm going to check this item out. And let's open it. This isn't actually a kind of file that I can actually edit. So let's pretend I just edited it. And we're going to check it back in. And let's say uh, we added a new section about uh, breaks, since this is our company uh, procedure manual. And we'll say, no, we don't want to keep this checked out after uh, checking it in. Now looking at this document under version history, you'll see that there's two different versions of the document. The notes for one are about what was done. And I can actually, by clicking on either one of these items, go back to that version of the document. So if I didn't like the changes that were most recently made, you know, I can open this one up, I can edit it, I can, you know, delete this version. You simply do that by restoring. So nice way to make sure that your content staying uh, consistent and um, going to stay current. Let's create some more content for our site. We've showed forms or documents in forms library. Um, a little more advanced because I don't have InfoPath on here, but uh, you know, if anybody's interested in that, uh, we can talk about that more on an individual basis after the webinar or sometime. Um, show you what a picture library looks like. We'll just call this Pix for the sake of getting it done quickly. And let's display it on a quick launch. Sure, and now we don't need versioning for our pictures. We're not worried about people editing our pictures. And we'll upload a few pictures here. Hopefully I can find some nice and quickly. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to strike out on heavens, showing what the picture library looks like. But imagine a slideshow. Imagine a photo album. Hopefully you can visualize it. Looks nice, doesn't it? So we've already shown it. We've already seen and shown announcements. Let's look at how a contact list would look in SharePoint. Let's just call this contacts, nice and quick and simple, and we'll show this on our quick launch bar as well. As well. So now you see under pictures, there's our pics library. And you can add a contact list. What you're basically doing is uh, just adding in contacts just as you would in Outlook or you know your Outlook mailbox, Outlook public folders. Can take a while, can be a little daunting to add it in here. So that's really where the strength of um, having a custom list comes from. So what I'll do is we're going to make a custom list. And we're going to do that by importing a spreadsheet. So you see what options you have here are, let's just call this our test contacts. So what you would do here now is, you know, say you've got that big Outlook contact list. You export that to an Excel file. We browse for our file and it'll pull it right in. So rather than having to manually create all your contacts, 